Hi everyone, welcome back to episode 4 of the Cult of the Dead Dub podcast. I'm your host Jay and I'm joined by... Um, the bestest friend in the whole wide world, yes, Emma. <laughs> this is Emma. She is also going to be doing a story for us today. How are you? How really you tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Do you have anything exciting you want to share with the world or do you want to jump right in to chaos? Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything to share. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first or do you want to rock, paper, scissors? Um, well, do you want to start with a fun, with a mis- mystery funny story or do you want to end with a funny mystery story? Let's start with my murder. Okay. These notes are going to be a little all over the place. I did finish this an hour ago. <laughs> I did mine last night. I believe in preparation. Today we're talking about Robert William Willie, a horrible nickname, picked in a Canadian serial killer, a.k.a. the Pig Farm Killer. He was born on October 24th, 1949 in, do you know how to say that word? Because I don't. Port Coquitlam? British Columbia. I totally butchered that. Doesn't. Butcher that. You know what? It Get doesn't it. matter. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Shit. That was a good one. <laughs> he and his brother owned a farm together. Uh, his brother's name is David, but he's not really important. And there was a worker named Bill, and I can't pronounce his name. He called the farm a creepy-looking place. Fair. And described Robert as pretty quiet with sometimes bizarre behavior. Don't know what that was, by the way. Never um, saw anything about it. That could be, like, he ate everything with ketchup or, like, killed animals. He killed and, animals. I guess he's a pig farmer, so he does. But, like, what if he sacrificed animals and, like, he walked in on him? That would be weird. I was like, hmm, that's strange. Or he, or he saw that and then immediately was like, no, it's the, it's him eating ketchup and carrots together. That's mm-hmm. bizarre. <laughs> so they began to neglect farm operations and ended up registering a nonprofit charity with the Canadian government in 1996. Yes? No, keep going. Claiming to quote unquote organize, coordinate, manage, and operate special events, functions, dances, shows, and exhibitions on behalf of service organizations sports organizations, and other worthy groups. These events, you may ask, uh, were just raves (laughs) and parties where they're like, hey, let's fucking party in a converted slaughterhouse with sex workers. Yay! Fun! You know, using government money for really important things. (laughs) Yay! On March 23rd, 1997, he was charged with the attempted murder of Wendy Lynn Esseter, who was a sex worker. Um, so he, like, handcuffed her, you know, because they were, like, gonna have sex, but then he just ended up stabbing her. Not kinky. Not (laughs) kinky. Um, but she's a badass, so she, like, got out of the handcuffs, disarmed him, and then started stabbing him back. (laughs) Which I love. The charge was dismissed in 1998. It's hard to believe that that was 1998. I know. This feels like something that would happen in the 50s. It does. You're like, oh, he's born in the, what, the 40s? So you're like, oh, this happens way back then. But this is like 20 years ago. I don't like that. 22 years ago. Almost 23. True. And then the nonprofit status was removed, and the party farm uh, was disbanded, obviously. Because they're like, what are you doing? (laughs) Give us our money back. So, over three years, the worker, Bill, noticed that women who visited the farm, uh, went missing. Hmm. Suspicious. No. It's a little sus. A little (laughs) sus. Just a little. (laughs) And then on February 6, 2002, I was a, I was a peanut. I was born. I was. Oh, yeah. You were. Two months old? You were a little. I was a little raisin. Yeah. (laughs) Police had a search warrant. Um, for illegal firearms, so they searched his property, and then they searched it again as a part of BC Missing Women Investigations. They found personal items of missing women, but it wasn't, like, enough to keep him. Yeah. So they had to let him go, but kept Gross. him under surveillance. 
Uh, but then, literally, at the end of the month, on February 26th, he was arrested and charged. Wow. With two counts of first-degree murder Only for Only two? Deaths. Oh, don't even worry. <laughs> fun fact. Ooh. This is gonna This be fun. was the largest serial killer investigation in Canadian history. Wow. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So, so much fun. they ended up excavating the farm, and the total cost of the investigation was $70 million. What? I know. I was like, why? Why is it that much money to just dig up a farm? Yeah, I don't... I, that maybe they just sense. had, a mil- like, 100 people with just shovels, and they had to pay them all by the hour. I, don't, I have no idea. That doesn't make sense, but keep going. Here are some of the other fun things that okay. they found. A loaded twenty two revolver with a dildo over the barrel with one round fired. Don't oh. ask, I don't know. Oh! They put it oh. like over the, over the front. No! <laughs> I wanted to shoot a shot. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Boxes of .357 Magnum handgun ammunition, night vision goggles, That's two not pairs the most thing. of faux fur lined handcuffs. This guy is give, really giving mixed signals. A syringe with three milliliters of blue liquid inside. Um, You'll find out what that is later. Oh, I'm like, a uh, blue liquid? That's not very, that's um, very vague. I don't know what this word is. It's an aphrodisiac. An aphrodisiac is a substance that substance that increases sexual desire, sexual pleasure, or sexual behavior. All right, he's got that. He's got some of that. Do you know asparagus is or is, er, asparagus is an aphrodisiac? <laughs> he's got a Spanish fly one, so I don't know what that means. Um, here's where some fun stuff happens. Oh, goody! Don't read my Sorry. notes. They also found this is a quote. Oh, goody. Submerged in a pink soup of decomposing human matter were the two halves of Wilson's skull, along with her hands and feet. Oh! Court has heard that a .22 caliber bullet was found in the can with Wilson's remains, her body parts, and the liquid was sent in for an autopsy. Oh, God. Human soup oh, is God. what they found. I hate that. So essentially, um, all the people that he murdered were, quote, butchered like animals in the farm slaughterhouse. Which also was at one point a place where people partied it up. Do you think they did that at the same time? I wouldn't be surprised. You can get away with a lot of stuff when people are like, fucked up on yeah. drugs. <laughs> Forensic analysis Not proved know. difficult because bodies may have been left to decompose or to be eaten by insects or the pigs on the farm. Yeah, pigs eat everything. Because he's a pig farmer. But, uh, they, yeah, essentially they just found traces of human remains, like in the dirt. On March 10th, 2004, the government revealed that Picton may have ground up human flesh, and mixed it with the pork that he sold to the public. Can I insert my fact here? Yes. Okay, so the ter- there's a term called long pig. I don't like where this is going. That's like, that's what, like, human, f- like, a, a re- term for human flesh. Yeah. Because um, human flesh and, like, pork is, like, very similar. Ugh. I don't know why, why they're similar, they? but they are. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, we are really close to pigs. Like, they use pigs and they need to test stuff for people. Yeah. Ew! <laughs> uh, don't eat people. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> so. Sorry for ruining your life. Thank you <laughs> so much. So, meat from the farm. I can't even say that word now. I, like, want to throw up was only distributed to a small circle of family and friends. <laughs> and uh, the, they kept saying, I was reading all these articles where they're like, warning, like health warning, and they're like, oh, there may have been some cross 
contamination because they didn't want to actually say because they didn't want to be like human meat "Mm, you definitely ate a person so either you know he ground it up and then fed it to his friends or he gave it to his piggies i like the piggies better Because they don't know what they're eating. They don't have a conscience. They aren't thinking, "Uh uh-oh, I'm eating a person. By the way, I love pigs. They're very... They're they're cute. So, he ended up getting charged with 27 counts of first-degree murder. Thank you. (laughs) During questioning, he was caught on camera saying, here, to kill a female heroin addict was to inject her with windshield washer fluid. That's, the, that's oh. what's in the syringe. <laughs> Just throw some Windex I'm in there. I'm pretty sure you could kill anybody by injecting them. No, with no, no. 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 Specifically female heroin addicts. It won't affect anyone else. I'm sure it would. <laughs> in another tape, um, his associate said Picton talks about killing prostitutes by handcuffing and strangling them, then bleeding and gutting them before feeding them to the pigs. Yeah. In the end. <laughs> well, I guess with the fur-lined cuffs, you could kind of be like, um, you kind of be like, I'm really kinky into this stuff. Let yeah. me handcuff you I mean, up. you know, you hand a sex worker money. She, she's she'll gonna, do everything. She's going to assume, oh, I'm just going to do my job and not get fucking murdered. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Um, But he was only found guilty with six charges of second-degree murder. Probably. What? It was probably too much work to do all of them. Well, yes. Also, like, they don't have concrete eminence, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. Da, 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 but da. he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for 25 years, which was the max possible sentence. And the judge said, Mr. Picton's conduct was murderous and repeatedly so. I cannot know the details, but I know this. What happened to them was senseless and despicable. Yep. And that's the story. Of the pig farmer killer, Robert William Willie Picton. I don't like this name. Yay! What are your sources? I do that at the end. Oh, okay. Well, you want them now? Here are my sources. Well, I just have sources, and I don't know when to say them. I used Wikipedia. (gasps) Thank you. Go Wikipedia! Um, I found this story on Tumblr by someone named Criminal. With an o. Criminal. So thank you to them. Um, news.com.au, news.bbc.co.uk, the globe and mail.com, missingpeople.net, and webarchive.org. Woohoo! Great story. Thank you. You did amazing. I hope you loved it. I didn't, but. <laughs> well, don't eat people. <laughs> That's the moral of this story. <laughs> That's what we learned. And don't work on a pig farm. <laughs> stay away from farms. Don't stay away and from farms. Pigs. Stay away from all farms. Every pig that's ever existed. My dad works on a farm. <laughs> exactly. He's probably a serial killer. My dad's not a serial killer. He couldn't be. He's such a nice man. <laughs> okay, so time for the, my story. Which Tell is, me a tall tale. Is a very, it's more of a mystery, and it's, mm-hmm. it's about a porpoise. I, <laughs> I have never typed porpoise more than I have. <laughs> than writing. a dolphin, right? No, they're not. They're different. They're like dolphins. Yes, they're in the this same family. This is the second dolphin. dolphin story. It's a porpoise. <laughs> You're a porpoise. I wish I could be a porpoise, and then I could dive away from my problems. Amen. <laughs> Okay, so, I first heard this story. Sorry! It's okay, but it's just really loud. Okay, so I first heard the story from a YouTube video mm-hmm. from, on the channel Ask Mortician, which is by Caitlin that Dowdy. It's such a huge channel to watch. It is. I do want to, Emma's not a serial killer. <laughs> She's just... Weirdly fascinated weird. with death. Okay, but would highly recommend that channel. Not sponsored, by the way. Um, so. We don't have sponsors. I'm just saying, clarifying. (laughs) Keep going. Okay, so. The remains, this story starts on the tiny island of 
Chapelle d'Amhui. Where is that? It is a tiny island off the Guernsey coast, oh. which is in Great Britain area. Okay, so it's the British's fault. Yes. This island is only 49 feet long. <laughs> oh, does that even which is, count? That's so cute. Which is um, roughly the length of two double-decker buses. <laughs> I want to live there by myself. So, there was um, the archaeologist, Dark- Dr. De Jersey was on the island um, researching and looking at ruins of what is con- believed to be a monastic structure. So basically, an ancient Christian structure where monks lived. The monks lived on two yes. double-decker buses? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. They were very close so, with each other. And this just... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, this grave was discovered in 2017. Mm-hmm. It was most likely buried between 1416 and 1490. Radiocarb... Yes. Radiocarbon dating was done on the remains. You say you say fourteen anything, and I can't, I can't like so, comprehend it. The first when they first kind of unearthed this grave, they thought it was a human grave because yeah. you wouldn't be surprised to see a human grave. <laughs> that's logical. That's logical. Because it was deliberately made and cut into the hard bedrock of the island, which would have taken a lot of work, uh-huh. and the grave. Had an even foundation, symmetrical walls, and a rounded end. So, like... Very fancy. Yes. If so my grave is... If you don't dig <laughs> my grave like that, I will haunt you. Okay. And they initially, when they found the bones, they're like, it's human, but the skull's a little too big. <laughs> it's the 1400s, you know? People and looked a little funky. It's probably They normal. realized that it was a... Common porpoise. Does that mean that porpoise skeletons and human skeletons look similar? Well, no, but it's like when it's like half buried in dirt. Okay, that's fair. Maybe I should ease up on them a there little bit. There were two holes in the skull above like where the nostril cavities were that were most likely made by like rats or some sort of animal that had found it. Yeah. So, why the hell was there a grave of a porpoise? He was a good man. On an island two where monks. Two buses. <laughs> two on double. two double decker buses. And so there are three theories. Oh my god. And yes. none of them are going to make any fucking sense. Not really. <laughs> so, so, either way, the porpoise was most likely trapped on the island mm-hmm. and the monk when the monks found it. So, theory one. Hit me. Is sacred porpoise. <laughs> it's because Jesus! <laughs> Jesus was a porpoise! So, in the medieval <laughs> times, <laughs> um, dolphins and porpoises were held in he- high regard by medieval Christians. They should be. They're very smart. They, sim- they Depending on what area you were in, they could symbolize eternal life. Or they could symbolize the followers of Christ. Don't ask me why. Because they're, they, I, I literally can't think of anything. So, the porpoise washed up on the shore, and the monks could have given it a Christian burial. Because it is a sacred, out of reverence. And the bones were aligned east to west, as Christian tradition dictates. What? I've never yeah. heard that before. That might have been, like, ancient Christian tradition. Oh, I have to burp. And so... <sighs> There are, in, like, catacombs of Rome, there are, like, drawings of what appears to be a dolphin or a porpoise. That's hilarious. So that's one theory. So, which... God is a porpoise. Yes. Theory mm-hmm. one. Theory Got one. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm going to name which, this episode now. <laughs> it's going to be... It's going to be the porpoise god in human soup. <laughs> 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 Woohoo! Okay. So... This theory is kind of, like, a little out there. (laughs) Oh. No, no. This one's a little out there? Theory theory two? No, theory one's a little out there. Theory one is my favorite so far. Okay. And it's going to be hard to beat. Theory two. Porpoise preservation. Interesting. At the time, porpoise meat was considered a delicacy. 
And there is record and evidence that porpoises were eat were eaten in the Guernsey area in the 13th and 14th century. And this so they could have taken the porpoise, mm -hmm. buried it in a salt brine to preserve uh, it. And then later they would exhume and consume it. <laughs> exhume and consume, baby! <laughs> so there are records from the 12th and the 13th century that showed disputes over porpoise meat that could last months. What? What does that mean? Because they were, like, delicacies, and it might be a little bit more explained with Theory 3. But, to no, continue I thought, on wait, with Theory 2... I'm not done. Hold on. <laughs> what? I'm not done. I'm not letting that one go. Disputes about porpoise meat. Yes. What are you disputing? Who gets to have it? Oh, if it... For dinner. <laughs> Can you imagine if we fought for months on who gets the pizza in my fridge? It wouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> it would be a moldy pile of bread. Well, it'd be a moldy porpoise. <laughs> um, and there are acid actual recipes for porpoise haggis. Ugh, I don't like the idea of eating a dolphin that's not a dolphin. That's a porpoise. Which, it's a quick thing about the recipe. It, call, it needs porpoise fat, I think, porpoise blood, Ew. salt, Ginger and oatmeal. That's it. And then you sew it into the stomach of a porpoise. You sew and you boil it, it into the. <gasps> Ew! What the fuck? What were people on in the fourteen hundreds? I don't know. Ugh. But crack as um, Caitlin Doty says. Uh, no. The Middle Ages were magic. <laughs> the Middle Ages were fucking whack. Sew it. Sew it. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Stay away from pigs, farms, porpoises, monks, tiny <laughs> islands, everything. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> what, huh? What are you getting me? A porpoise on a double-decker bus, I hope. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to the last theory. All right. Theory number three. Theory one is still my favorite. Secret porpoise. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> so... <laughs> You good? That girl really got me good. <laughs> Nothing can beat secret <laughs> porpoise. So, there was a porpoise eating hierarchy. <laughs> Not everyone could eat a porpoise. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, there's a hierarchy? Okay. Does they have things to do in the 1400s? Like farming or staying alive? They're on a double-decker bus. I guess so. What can they do? Okay. The people on the bottom level don't get to eat the porpoise. You're not far from being wrong. <laughs> the people on the top level in the bus can get the shitty parts. But if you're at the top of the bus, then you get the golden meat. So, if a random monk found a porpoise, it would need to be given to the abbot or the highest ranking monk in the area. There is also, little side note, no. something called Fish's Royal Law that, <laughs> that exists in England. Yes. Certain types of fish, technically... Mammals, some mammals. So if, like, a porpoise, a dolphin, a whale, or a sturgeon was caught, it would first have to be offered to the monarch. I like that sturgeon <laughs> is on that list. I don't know why sturgeon's on the They're list. They're like, mm, I mean, like, the big ones, right? You know, we got whales, we got the, we got the dolphins. So I was like, what about a sturgeon? Yeah, I throw it Whatever, in there. Whatever, throw it in there. Oh okay. My God. Can you imagine, like, being, like, a king and, like, doing important things, and then someone's like, sir, we need to interrupt your war meeting because they found a porpoise. And they're like, okay. I actually think that the most recent time I read or heard somewhere that the most recent time that this law was was like in the 2000s someone presented a sturgeon to the queen <laughs> offered it hey britain are you okay <laughs> uk are you are you all right they can't be they can't okay so back to the secret porpoise theory <laughs> yes so I'm the like porpoise so sweating <laughs> 
may have been found by a monk who wasn't supposed to have it, but they wanted it oh. because it's a delicacy. It's like you're the abbot's not wow. getting this. What I found a monk. it. Fake monk, so right there. He could have. This monk could have buried it in secret, in hopes of later reclaiming it. But that's so much work to like make it so nice. Maybe he's like, this is a a delicacy. It Everyone, deserves a good grave. It needs a good resting place before I can come back. So, yeah, that is a mystery of the buried porpoise. What do you think it is? Well, I don't think it's the sacred porpoise theory. I think it's God. Because God's a porpoise. If, it, if they were eating it at that time, why would you bury perfectly Maybe good meat? what if... They could have... What if they ate it and then buried the bones? Yes. That could also have been... But that it was still sacred. Happened. They're like, if we eat this, we will be godly, but then we'll bury uh, the bones for respect. True. It's what i do true. in the 1400s. So maybe it's like a mix of all of them, you know? No, I... It's like, I, it's a sacred porpoise, but they also want to eat the porpoise. <laughs> I have never said porpoise. <laughs> You've said it so many times. <laughs> More in my life. You've reached your, you're like, you're never going to be able to say it again. <laughs> that was such a good catch. That was a really stressful moment. I know, it would have made a really loud noise. Okay, so that is my story. And I found my information at Ask a Mortician, um, Astonishing Le- Legends, National Geographic, and BBC. Wow! <laughs> that was a mixed bag. That was a journey. An emotional and spiritual journey. Thank you all so much for listening. If you want to follow the podcast, you can find us on Instagram at the Cult of the Dead Dove. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Dead Dove Cult. We are now on Patreon, and I'm setting that up. So if you just look up the Cult of Is the Dead Dove, be extra content. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of bloopers. Oh, goody. A lot of bloopers. <laughs> if you <laughs> want to, we also have the episodes up on. YouTube, if you just start the Cult of the Dead Dove, I have the audio and also I put fun little pictures in so you can see who we're talking about. I think that's everything. Um, if you want to support us, please follow on Spotify and YouTube. Give us five star rating on iTunes would be much appreciated. Stay safe. Take care of yourself and remember wear a mask. Wear a mask over your nose. And remember everyone, don't eat the dead dove. Thank you very much. I'll see you next Friday.